Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video and happy 2023. As per usual, I've been on the main roads for quite a while and at this time of year, they're really nice to drive on. And obviously without the studded tires, it'd be a pretty different journey. But now I've come into the back roads here, you can see this road was semi-plowed. I'm not sure how far this plowed road goes into, but uh, the Jeep's on street pressure right now and it's doing fine, but I'm gonna wear down, keep on making my way in and see whether I can find a decent place to camp. And I'm contemplating putting the chains on just as a preventative measure so I don't have to do it when I really get into something a bit difficult later on. We'll see, I don't know what's waiting for me, but uh, time to air down. So I reckon that's around about 5 PSI, I don't have a gauge, I lost it a long time ago and never bought another one and just started doing it by eye ever since, but just got to look at the bulge. We all have to look at the bulge. It was all going really well and then uh, I thought yeah I'll just check my uh, my OnlyFans page and, uh, and I just lost it just took my eye off the road and went straight in so um, I think what I'm gonna have to do is get the winch out
just good to be out of that situation and the Jeep's just chugging along. I'm in four low, second. I can go into third, but it starts to work a little bit more than it needs to. I'm going at a, a speed that's a little bit too quick and mistakes can happen. So just chugging along like this, five PSI, you know, is good. And we're coming to an incline now, so I just have to put a little bit more power down. Not too bad got to the top still pretty deep though the jeep's doing a better job of floating on the snow than i am there's a little bit of a snow drift there probably hard to see with the contrast and the road carries on but i can only fear that it's probably going to get higher and higher and there's a little off road there so we're basically coming into unplowed snow here so this is going to be very tough but this track goes on for quite a few well quite a long way actually it looks like it goes up a little bit around the and a nice little mountainous area there which looks lovely little forest up high up and this one goes further up and you can see that's the road that the dude plowed so um, he went all the way up there and probably pushed the snow and came back down again so I'm gonna go check that out see if it's a nice camp spot but the adventurous side of me wants to press on into his layer hmm I'm going to put the chains on just because I'm out here having fun and I'm curious to see how they'll do um, and it's going to be difficult to put them on here really I'm going to have to I'm actually going to jack the vehicle up 
because it's just so so much easier to have the whole tire rather than dig away and lie them down or put them on the wheel and reverse back. They're chains that I've that were originally for 32s and I made them fit 35s. I length, had them lengthened, but they're a little bit tight, so they're really difficult to lie on and then roll the vehicle onto them and stuff. So it's my excuse basically. So shut up. I got some time. I got some daylight. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. What am I doing? Apparently. I'm on YouTube, so I'm like a expert in my field. Because I got a video. Oh shit. No no, they're right there. this little adapter the other day and then oh it did go on it used to didn't used to go on very well before it's loosened up um it goes under there like that just saves me a bit of work It's amazing how much chains loosen up when you uh, start using them when you, you could just go like a hundred meters and then they're sloppy as hell. That is a crap effort on the chains. I'm gonna get my ass handed to me in the comments section for this, but I deserve it. You, you really wanna just make sure this is, uh, you know, not, not doing that, going up higher and lower and higher and lower on the edge, but We'll see. I have to retighten them anyway. Got some uh, old trampoline springs here. I can't actually remember the configuration, but I made this last year. So I think it's one every other link. Uh. Uh. And that's it, we're ready to roll. Going up that same hill, punching through this virgin snow, I'm going uphill again now. Um, there's a tiny bit of slippage and stuff, but it, it seems to just keep going. It's, it's just made a massive difference. So I'm kind of keen to explore this other track now, although I am losing a lot of daylight. But let's get to the end of here. This might be a nice campsite. quiet apart from me but it's a beautiful spot it's worth coming up here nice view down there into a lovely lake or a couple of lakes but the track is gonna get sketchy if I go down there 
it's not going down that's the problem it's coming back because gravity will just work against me and it'll be impossible there's nothing to winch off of nothing anywhere so uh I don't know, I think I might call it for the night. I think this is camp. One little mod I did was extend the cable on the LCD. Um, one of the issues with having a diesel heater on the rear tire carrier in like really cold conditions is the LCD will freeze and then it won't respond to the radio signal off the fob or, and you can't push it and you have to warm it up. So this means I can just have it in the roof tent. So if I want to turn it off at night and listen to the sound of nature while I sleep, um, I can do that and in the morning it can be turned back on again. We got 100%. Yes. up in the roof tent with me tonight. Ooh. Done it again. It's the old dogman whistle called him in again don't do that no hot cup of tea try and warm my hands up a bit you can tell my hands are cold can't even flip and feel the tea or the warmth oh wow it's nice to be out here while I was back in the UK I was sort of uh, looking at the weather over here and thinking oh my god like the snow is really coming down I'm not going to be able to go out that's it I'm going to have to put the jeep off road and you know it's game over but uh from living here I've found that if you do enough kind of exploring and a bit of recon 
and can always find like these half ploughed roads and provided you catch them at the right time you can kind of use them for for a few weeks really a month maybe even longer depending on the snowfall and it kind of gives you places to go in the winter but uh, obviously if I had diff locks and full chains front and back then life's going to be a hell of a lot easier but you know I say to myself every year this year I'm going to get diff locks this year I'm going to get diff locks at least a front locker because the LSD at the back actually still does stuff I can see it working and when I watch videos and things and but it's the front that I always see letting the drivetrain down in a respect letting the vehicle down but uh, like an e-locker for example in the front would be great in this climate because I know air lockers have a big problem with um you know condensation and freezing in the lines because the lines are so thin and everything I mean I, I get that advice from people in Canada and stuff who I kind of know who do this kind of thing and have chatted to them so um an electric locker you know hopefully that will be a little bit better but then a great thing would just be a cable actuated locker like an ox locker but it's very difficult to get that stuff in Europe down to the mobile phone everything's failing but the phone because I can put the phone in my pocket but just doing a bit of a chop some rice might have an egg with it don't have any vegetables forgot to buy buy any and I'm trying my best to warm the camera battery up it's in its insulated pack but uh, yeah it's having a hard time really hard time There we go, that's me. I uh, perfectly cooked, nice and tender, not chewy. Got some water in there now, just keeping the rest of the gas going. Get this cleaned up and uh, put away, because that'll be me for the night, and then I'll just have cold food uh, if I get hungry, because it is only about four o'clock in the afternoon, it's not that late, but it's, it's near dinner time for me, so I've got some dates, some bananas. In the morning I'll do pancakes, chocolate and banana, and a bit of bread, got some eggs, some egg sandwiches, a bit of bacon, you know, stuff like that really. So I'm, I'm stocked up pretty good, just forgot the vegetables. But yeah, I'm going to feast and then uh, probably uh, try and warm up a bit. Well, I got the main camera up and running again. 
put it up in the roof tent and uh, it's pretty, pretty damn warm up there. So I think I'm going to go up there for a while, I've just had my dinner and uh, it was very nice. And got a few supplies up in the tent. I'm going to come back out later because I mean, if you check the time it's probably, yeah it's just, <laughs> just come five o'clock. You know, it feels way later but it's not. Um, so I'm just going to do some reading, going to chill and uh, just warm up a bit. Got some things up there to dry off. But it's a beautiful night. No moon, but uh, going to be some interesting time lapses. I hope the northern lights will be out, but if not, see if I can capture some interesting things in the sky with the time lapse. Oh, look at that. Find somewhere to put them. <sighs> just woke up and uh, I must have drifted off I've been reading and just chilling up here and uh, yeah it's about midnight now and um, so I must have gone down for about an hour and a half maybe two hours so things are pretty warm up here though obviously you've got the diesel heater chugging away yeah that's on, on a pretty low setting but it's about 11 degrees in here and it's minus 18 outside so that's obviously a drastic difference in temperature but anyway I've talked enough as per usual um, and I'll see you guys in the morning, hopefully. Unless uh, I get any visits in the night. Probably more likely reindeer if I'm gonna get some visits in the night. watching. Milk survived in the fridge, the fridge was off, but I guess it's got enough insulation. The meat's not frozen. It's good. I want to avoid taking too much stuff up in the roof tent or else it gets a bit crazy up there. But the fridge does have a warm mode, but yeah, not got much battery left and everything.
Looks like a lot of food for uh, such a small, insignificant life form like me, but I'm going to be out today doing some exploring and looking for another camp location. And uh, it's whited out, so it's going to be really hard to see the track. Um, and basically, I'm probably going to get stuck a lot. So, going to need some food, going to need to load up a bit. I don't normally eat bread. If I was at home, I'd have this without the bread, but you know, when I'm out here, I, you know, I'm burning a lot more, a lot more energy, really. I finally get hungry very fast. Well, breakfast is done. Feeling pretty full, actually, a bit too full. That's probably not a bad thing, considering what I've got to do. But let's see what this little guy can do. It's got about 46% left. And uh, I shall plug it into the engine heater, which will also do the battery. So we've got 17 minutes of heating the engine. It's not bad, it's enough time for me to have a cup of tea and, uh, and then fire this thing up. So it's drawing about 300 watts. 70 minutes is better than no minutes, I suppose. going to let the jeep warm up a bit it's uh yeah i'm all squared away and uh flipping out it's going to be a difficult area really to get out of because I, I don't want to reverse all the way back down this track um but there's nowhere to turn around if i just go off the edge a little bit there the track is like that um and it has these dugouts at the side which a lot of the tracks do obviously for runoff and stuff so they drain away better but for a vehicle it's extremely heavy you're going to reverse off the edge there and you're just going to sink the same the other side so, so where you see me is about as wide as I can be uh, just a little bit wider here so it's whited out it's going to be very difficult to see the contrast today but uh, we'll see what I can do
took a really long time. In video world it looked like just a few clips but there was a lot of nonsense. It's just very difficult reversing in the snail app and trying to follow the same track. It just takes a slight deviation and then you've created a new track and then you have to try and get back on the old track before you go off the edge. I don't know, maybe I'll go check out up there. He says, knowing that it would be a failure right at the start because the snow's too high, but we can try. That's the bad stuff, that hard stuff. Uh, minus three at the moment so uh, the snow is really wet you can kind of see it on the car and the ground it's getting very heavy it's hard to push so uh, there's a lot of snow to push when it's wet and axle hopping dug, 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 really not good you know things are going to start to break um, so I'm going to go back it's too risky especially on my own without enough spares to get me out this late in the day. Didn't realise how late it was. Literally got an hour of daylight left. I didn't realise how late in the day it was, so I think I'm going to be setting up camp in the dark tonight. It obviously took a bit of time to reverse down that track and, you know, everything takes a lot longer in the snow because it's just so easy to get stuck and I think it's minus two now, so, yeah, some heavy snow, but, uh, yeah, better to be nose first, that's for sure. Always better to be nose first, nose first, do you like that? Taking the chains off, a plow truck's actually been overnight. Done this whole road.
Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Just off the uh, main road onto this sort of semi-ploughed road here, I guess it's for purposes of logging. Goes up into sort of like a nice little mountainous area. I'm not sure how far the track goes, but uh, I'll find out. Anyway, take some air out and get going. Conditions have been really variable this past week. We had minus 31 degrees C the other day, the next day minus 8, now it's plus 1. So the snow's changing quite a bit and uh, I'm just in 4 high in about a second. Could go faster but the problem is it's so slippery that I'm going to end up ending, going off the edge here into the ditch and at the edge here it just plunges down for runoff so the snow looks like it's not very high but it's actually you know if you walked in there you just sink right up to your ass so it's pretty difficult to get the jeep out once you go nose in so I'm just taking it easy making my way up here but uh, yeah perfect day for chains we'll see we'll see if we tackle any uh, snow that really needs it Well, I found a nice spot and I've driven in a little bit, just made a nice flat spot. This is where I'm probably going to camp up tonight, maybe, it's plan B. Up there, this is ploughed partially, and then up there it isn't. It's about sort of 70, 80 centimetres high, the snow. So it goes off to a lake. I'm, I'm kind of keen to give it a try. I think it's going to be an epic fail, but I'm going to put the snow chains on and just go up there and just, just give it a feel. If it fails, chains are easier to take off than put on. So shouldn't be such a big deal taking them off in the morning but uh, give it a go Let's see if this works so an old Australian man do it it's got to work Australian men are never wrong.
all of this just to get stuck instantly and then come back. I need to make some new tensioners for the front actually. I've only got two sets at the moment. That's it, chains are on. Did an absolutely crap effort on that one. It's just awful. But uh, I'll drive a bit and I'll, and I'll sort them out um, a little bit later. You just you just drive like 100 metres and then tighten them up, if that. But uh, they ain't going anywhere. Not going anywhere. That was obviously a complete failure. Shut up. You know, I'm out here, I'm having fun. I, I wanted to try it, all right? But you know, in the last video, you'd see me pushing this kind of snow, no problem with and without chains. Um, about the same height, actually, in terms of where it is up the tire and the flotation of the vehicle. But the thing is, that's powder. It's like minus 13, minus 20 degrees C, like really light, powdery snow. You can just move it out the way. Um, pretty easily but the issue you've got with this snow is it's super wet so it's much harder to push so as you start pushing it the vehicle meets resistance way easier and then the tires then obviously need to work harder in terms of getting traction to move that heavier object they can't do that so the chains begin to dig or the tires just begin to spin and if there's no compacted surface underneath that for the chains to grip to or something for the tires to grip onto then you just start slipping and, and then you start digging. Um, it's obviously less likely to dig on rubber than it is with chains, but the snow's not dig enough, uh, deep enough really for it to dig and be a massive problem in this case. So, uh, you know, the way to kind of get over that would be to be on some big old tires, big balloon tires, let them down low tire pressure and just float over it or just like send it with a massive engine straight in and just end up in the ditch on your side over there somewhere. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to go set up camp.
this up. See the warm weather making these big old chunks. It was pretty difficult to drive through that kind of stuff. Just making myself feel better, really. Well, that's camp all set up. Just got to blow up Samantha. I mean the Exped Mega Mat Duo. And then basically I'm ready to uh, just chill out up there whenever I want to. But I spend most of my time outside when I'm out like this. But uh, flipping heck, it's getting a bit windy up here. I think I looked at the weather report, I'm in for a windy night. Old Father Weathers decided to send in the winds of time to uh, to make life a little bit more interesting up here. But uh, the, the Jeep set up perfectly wind's coming straight over the top of the roof tent which is great but uh, yeah there we go time for a cup of tea I'm expecting visitors today and uh, I don't mean from Bigfoot I mean from potentially the Sami and uh, if you live overseas and you're not familiar with Scandinavia or Lapland, and we're in South Lapland at the moment now, um, the Sami, I guess, are like uh, an indigenous people that uh, have inhabited um, Lapland, which obviously spans across, you know, the northerly part of Scandinavia, so like Finland, Sweden, I think Norway as well. And um, they're basically like traditional reindeer farmers, and, and they traditionally used to follow the reindeer as they migrated around Lapland on their own um, and they used to do that on sled dog now they generally use vehicles and snowmobiles so I can hear some snowmobiles out there now and uh, it being a weekday prob probably means that it would probably be the Sami I've seen a few of them around and I can imagine they're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing up here and, and maybe wanting to know who I am or what I'm doing because you don't see too many folk in four wheel drives in Sweden doing this kind of thing. I'm glad I put a lock on this tyre carrier. Just a little bit of extra security so the hatches are so easy to break open. There we are, ready to roll. The 
whistle on. Little med kit. I always take a few things with me when I leave the vehicle. Uh, binoculars, whistle, all that sort of stuff. A uh, bit of food, head torch. I always send the location, the location area I am to my wife as well. Um, GPS. So she knows where I am. There's all these little things you've got to do, I think, because accidents happen. There it is. Not too far away. I don't think it's going to be very deep, though. Because I can see shrubs and things coming out of it. It looks just like maybe a, a body of water rather than a little lake. Yeah, I mean you can see it's just uh, just like a bog. Maybe if I go in a little bit deeper, but flipping out, I'm not sure about this. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any ice fishing in this location. Nice to go out and get a walk, get a lay of the land, have a look, find out for yourself. I'll gather some birch bark on the way back, just get a fire going, look for some wood. But uh, it's about 30 centimetres deep, bang in the centre, so yeah, not, uh, not the best spot, but now I know. comes the climb from hell. Got some little bars here. Make my life much easier. Going up. That is a brisk walk up. Nice to get out and go for a bit of a bit of a snowshoe though. Check the lake. Sinking like a rock. Oof. Oh, I can go back and feel like I've earned my meal now. <laughs> Beautiful sight up here though. Yeah. I don't know whether that's the Sami in there, one of their helicopters. They haven't spotted the Jeep. They'll be flying over. Be small arms fire. Ah, uh, uh, leave me alone. Light it. <laughs> What have I done?
I should have plenty of logs. I uh, just found a few more under there, just a few sort of dry ones. And I've cut down a couple of uh, dead standing trees as well. So that should be, should be plenty. It's just my saw that's crap. Because my silky zoo bat is just, that thing's like ancient now. And the blade's just totally dead on it. Had to take extra time with this fire prep. It's been very, very wet. A lot of uh, wet bark and everything. When the wind comes howling in, it, it really gives you a hard time. Let's see if I can keep that going. Looks like it's a bite to go out. A lot of dampness. I know what you're thinking, like, why don't you use a lighter? I always get that question. I just like it, all right? Jesus. Just put my glove on there. Just, uh, it's just teasing the fire. It's like, oh, some plastic. And it'll burn a bit better. Hopefully I don't need these anymore. Whilst I'm in the process of rebuilding this back, back hatch and making like a storage area here, I have just put in a temporary light for cooking, which is pretty good, isn't it? Let's see if I can get this off warped. I think I burnt them a little bit. Well, I might have a little bit of bacon, but I think that'll be enough. This is looking pretty good and the potatoes are cooked through. I just caught them before they started to go, but fortunately they're, they're nice and soft and courgette's done as well. So keep that warm. So the thing about an open fire is, uh, you know, managing stuff can be a little bit different. I'm gonna season this bit of meat up a little bit of salt. Just a dashy do. Bigfoot's probably watching from the tree line right now, drooling. Hope he's not.
fancied a bit of a civilised meal tonight. Sit at a table. And this is basically it. This looks like a lot of food, but I deserve it. It's been a hard day. Ah, it's not really been that hard, but I can think of worse things. It's a lot of food for a little old me though. But as black as these potatoes are on the outside, they're good on the inside. Mmm. Perfect. Well that's day one, pretty much over. I'm not sure what time it is actually. I'd be surprised if it's any later than seven. <sighs> Half past five. Half past five and it's uh, it's pitch black. But that's not too bad really. Getting lighter and lighter. I mean, you know, when I was coming out in the deep winter, it was dark by two o'clock. So it's getting lighter, which is, which is always good. Um, but yeah, dinner was lovely. Ate it all absolutely stuffed which is kind of the way I want to be before I go up in the tent although I will take a banana up there with me just for eating Honestly. look at this but uh, yeah it's been a really nice day really really nice day shame I couldn't get further up that track but I was that was wishful thinking with these conditions you know, maybe may early winter fresh powder fine but you know, this late in the winter when the temperatures are really fluctuating and the, the snow's basically deflated and sort of melted basically and hardened into, it's getting denser and denser. A lot, a lot of the time snow driving's not often about the exact conditions, but what happened previously over the winter and like what are you left with at that point in time? You know, and the density of the snow is, is where it's at. Like if it's dense and heavy and you're gonna have a real hard time with it unless you can run some big big tires with flotation and just go up on it i hear a lot of people say um you want really thin skinny tires to cut through the snow and that makes perfect sense when you have ground clearance but um as soon as you start getting to 80 centimeters a meter even more all the real snow rigs you see are on balloon tires and they're deflating them to nothing and floating around on that snow like a snowmobile so you know the thin tires work when the conditions are like sort of this you know and when it gets deep it's yeah those thin tires are not going to do you any good a mate of mine's got a Land Rover Discovery and he's on pretty thin tires and it and does well by the most part but as soon as you get into the deep stuff it's just bellied up you know and that's just the way it is really but I'm going to drink this tea I shall bid you farewell and see you in the morning.
Well, good morning. Get a cup of tea on. It's an absolutely beautiful night. Uh, moon and northern lights, the stars. It was a really beautiful night. It turned out to be a pretty bright night actually. So I went out a bit later on, made another drink, and just sat and like watched the stars. It was it was pretty awesome actually. But uh, yeah, another beautiful day in the plus degrees. So we're at plus one at the moment. The jeep was iced up this morning. Now it's thawing out. So here's the roof tent, which is obviously a real plus, but. Man, there's a lot of condensation in that roof tent this morning. I don't have the diesel heater going while I'm sleeping because I hate the sound of it, as I keep saying on every video, but you might be new to this one. Uh, so I fired it up in the morning, dried the inside of the tent out and all the bedding and everything, got it ready for like packing away without any moisture. But yeah, the outside's just got a little bit of a bit of frost on it now, so that's not a problem, but yeah. Should probably get round to building a wind deflector to this. Chopping board's kind of working though. Kinda being the, the key word there. So good. pathetic pancakes having a bit of trouble with the wind and stuff that's my excuse basically so keep keep the noise down but uh, yeah instead of maple syrup it's gonna be honey with a giant mutant pancake and some bacon I really, think that's a pretty good start to the day it is brunch after all let's see if this thing's actually cooked It's food. So you've got a little bit of engine warming going on there put the big eco flow on so in total it's had about an hour worth of uh heat coming out of there which is which is good it's better than nothing and uh now it's time to start this thing up and uh, i don't really want to like let it idle for a long time especially not in these cold conditions 
with a diesel engine you, you really want to start it give it a minute let the oil sort of go around a couple of minutes and then start driving so unplug this battery now because it's got one minute left on it and then i'll fire up the engine i'll be pretty interested to see how this this starts up i adjusted the pump timing a couple of days ago new fuel pin so more fuel pump timing adjustment to advance the pump a little bit more and a couple of pounds more boost. I've been getting some advice from a guy in the Netherlands called Yelmer. He's a bit of a specialist on the VM actually and a bit of a enthusiast as well. He's an engine builder. And I've got a ton more power out of the vehicle because of it and much lower exhaust gas temps due to that advancing of the pump timing. But obviously now that the vehicle's kind of very manual, there's no electronics and stuff. So when you do the pump advancement, it is, you know, your your it can either affect cold starts or the top or the bottom really of, of how the engine performs. So let's see how it starts up. Let's let the coil turn off on the glow plugs. Not too bad actually. Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Sun's super bright, so got to keep my shades on. It's that time of year, really. The, the weather's much better than it was in the dead of winter. Now, like we're approaching spring winter, that's what they call it in Sweden. The snow's a lot wetter, although still not good enough to create snowballs with. It needs to be a bit warmer than this. But it just does mean that the driving conditions are really good right now because I can compact the snow and it's just kind of behaving a lot better in terms of flotation. Anyway, I'm going to make it to where I want to make it to big lake there hopefully I can find a spot nearby and actually do a bit of ice fishing for the first time this winter
this is it. This is where I'm going to camp. I've driven a very long way for a very long time. Uh, the track went on much further than this. I went all the way to the end, but um, there's no logs to be collected. So I assume that maybe the job's already done and this place is now not going to be used again. But I've just parked here really because it's the one place on the track that I'm not blocking it. And I don't like blocking things, only toilets at uh, certain certain establishments but the winds have picked up a little bit so i've turned the vehicle around so the clamshell is opening into the wind so that the wind should just drift over the top and i should have a pretty quiet night anyway gonna get set up and i go for a hike and see if i can find this lake that i can see on the map it's out that way hopefully it's not like last time where it's like 30 centimeters deep knowing my luck though love this tent I've used it pretty much all winter now I will say if you're somebody who suffers with a bad back this this bit here ain't much fun and uh, my advice would be keep these loose before setup and then tighten them down like that after because or else you know I think most people probably know that I'm just flipping stupid Damn good cup of tea. Lovely time of year to be out. They call it spring winter. I can feel the sun reflecting off of my skin. Ah, it's been such a long, cold winter, but it's been a good one. It's been a really good one. This is probably the best winter I've had here in Sweden so far. You know, we've been here about five years now. You know, things have settled down, work, everything. You know, we've got our life together, and I've been out doing loads of driving and overlanding and sort of snowshoeing and camping and just really felt like I've enjoyed my winter. It's, it's quite easy to sit back and, and let those dark days sort of make you stay inside. But, um, you know, I've tried my best to get out there and, uh, and kind of enjoy myself because last winter I was extremely ill. Um, I don't really publicize it on the channel, but I've got ulcerative colitis, um, you know, which is a really shitty thing to have, literally. <laughs> but uh, you know if, it, if it's left untreated it is but um you know so i can get quite quite sort of bad spells of fatigue and things like that and, and life's been a little bit different after my diagnosis and and getting that and going through it um you know and coming out the other end of it you know it's been, it's been a bit of a push really so there can be times where you know i can really feel quite weak and fatigued and i have to push myself through it you know i don't have that same vibrancy and energy i once used to you know uh pr prior to that and i feel it when i'm working on the jeep you know and all sorts of other things so you know i have to kind of push myself a bit to get out and uh and it is worth it though because i feel a lot better once i'm doing some sort of activity like skiing snowboarding hiking with the snowshoes and things like that so it does help it kind of brings you out of that fatigued feeling but um you know not sure whether that's interesting for anyone or not but 
Pro probably not. This is brutal. Sinking like a rock. It's got the hard ice on top, and as soon as you break it into the crystals below, there's nothing there. Uh, so, this has uh, not been the most enjoyable walk. I mean, it's about a thousand meters total. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? <sighs> Just testing the ice near the edge, and uh, it's about yeah, about seventy centimeters thick. So it's pretty damn thick, and obviously. Using a manual auger like this is, yeah, it's not it's not the not the most fun. Um, I do have an attachment for it that goes onto a drill, and that's much much nicer. But I haven't got that with me. And I also have an extension bar that makes it much longer, so you're not like down on the ice. These are just excuses because obviously you've forgotten all that. Shit. Well, I've moved holes a few times, as you do, and uh, yeah, nothing's really happening. I think the most exciting thing that's happened so far is a family came by on their snowmobiles. Well, I think I'm going to get out of here. That was a very unsuccessful fishing experience. Very rare for me, I'll be honest with you. Nor normally, probably have like 45 centimetre perch at least at least 18 of them on each hole so uh, a bit of a strange one but the weather's changing uh, got a bit of a front coming in and uh, the wind has really picked up and it's flipping cold so I'm gonna head back to camp get some wood get ready for the night hopefully the journey back goes better with the snowshoes now it's cooled off the ice hardens up a bit That's what I'm looking for. They're harder to find in the winter, unless they're poking out the snow, but that's uh, an old root, just solid with resin. One of the reasons it kind of hasn't really rotted, so you just scrape that, put a spark in the dust, it'll start to burn if you really want tinder, but I want them as logs. Now I am actually tired.
flasks helped me out quite a bit actually. Oh. Uh, with uh, saving money on gas. As you can see by my vehicle, I, me and my wife and son have had to resort to living in a cardboard box. But as long as the Jeep keeps working, it's kind of all that matters really. getting there another 10 minutes I'm still really happy with this purchase this thing here um, it did cost me a bit though I think 750 crowns for the Murica and for the Murica lid it was 450 but that's because they're branded I think you can get clone versions of this stuff for half the price um, and I've seen stuff out there and like in gas stations and things that you're selling something like this but you can get cast iron ones you can get steel ones it can be this big they can be this big they can be huge you know they're so popular in sweden like everybody's got one and they're all over the place every outdoor shop you know every fuel station has these things in them and um not the lids most of the time but just the plate with either legs or whatever and you go to the hunting shops and the fishing shops and they've got the big ones with like gas bottles that you rig them up to. They're a little bit like scottles in the US, but it's just, I guess it's the same thing really. But I can see why a lot of people make them as of I, with, by welding on some eyes for the stove. Because you do end up paying a fair bit for them. And if you have a stove, like I already did for backpacking and you kind of don't want to buy something else, it's nice to be able to clip that on there and then you can take it off and put this thing on an open fire if you like. Gonna let dinner cool off a bit and get a fire on the go. Let's see what this is like. Could be disgusting. It's looking pretty unappetizing, but it should function as as a carbon-based food. It's basically just potatoes, some meat, spices. I forgot the cheese because I'm stupid. Cool. Well that's dinner done, um, it's an interesting meal, I think I'm going to call it Uncle Mike's Chili Dog Shit, I think that's what I'm going to call it. So it will be about minus, uh, yeah minus 12 tonight, so it's this that freezes, so just clear it out of any water, turn this upside down and then it will work in the morning. But there's plenty of snow around, so it's not the end of the world.
Well, it's bright and early in the morning. It's actually not really, it's about 11 o'clock, but you know, it's nice to have a bit of a line and take the morning slow. Dad life, as it goes. <laughs> take the opportunities when you can. But uh, yeah, beautiful day again, a bit windy, it's cutting through a bit and uh, yeah, nice and sunny. But my, my uh, diesel heat has just finished its decondensation procedure. And we're really coming to the end of winter now where within about six weeks, all this snow will pretty much be gone underneath the vehicle. We'll probably have a few of these lumps here at the edges where the plow trucks compacted it all, but that'll thaw out pretty damn quick. And then it'll be back to kind of like endless daylight, 24 hour daylight, mosquitoes and giant horse flies and all sorts of other stuff but the fishing will be a lot better looking forward to not drilling holes in the ice but a number of questions I always get asked from people who are interested in overlanding in the winter is about diesel heaters and um, you know the procedures around them and everything else I mean it's something for a separate video really but I'll just touch on it very briefly um, I absolutely hate the diesel heater in a way that it makes a horrible racket I can't sleep with it on so I have it on for about three hours in the evening while I'm reading and stuff and uh, and then in the morning I put it on for like maybe about three hours again just while I'm waking up and to, to dry out the inside of the roof tent and that kind of brings me to the point of a reason why I love the diesel heater and that's because it's granted me access this winter to be out non-stop throughout the winter and never have to worry about opening my rooftop tent and drying it out in between camps which is a real big deal for me because if you look at my garage it's not particularly high in terms of the roof so you know it's okay for working on the vehicle in but you can't really do anything with the roof tent up there you can't dry your equipment out so that's something I need to do while I'm out here and that's what the diesel heat has allowed me to do the entire winter and I have had no issues with mold inside the roof tent like I have done in previous years. I usually take the exhaust uh, tube off the back, I have it running around into the tent with the, with the normal tube that I have putting hot air in, so I have two tubes going in the tent. One goes under the mat and the other goes above and I stuff my sleeping bag under the mat and lift it up so I've got like a gap um, where hot air is being blown underneath that and another gap at the top and it creates this kind of circulation in the tent, it completely dries everything out and uh, you know the thing is ready to put away now with all the bedding in until the next time I go out and I don't have to worry ever about opening it up in between that and I think going forward into next winter over the summer I'll just take that diesel heater apart a bit more get some more spares for it make it a bit easier to maintain but you know worst case scenario I actually don't need the, the diesel heater for warmth because my sleeping bag and my sleep gear up there can take me well below minus 25 degrees C. So I never completely depend on it. It's just there to allow me to dry my stuff off. That's basically what it does for me. Despite the diesel heater usage, I've got about 60, 62% power left inside this. And uh, I like to take care of the diesel engine, so I have a, an engine warmer to preheat the coolant to circulate it and uh, get things warmed up as to not cold start the engine. So that's drawing about 600 watts, which is about as much as this battery can handle basically. Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm back out again and I'm just off the main road at the beginning of what looks like a semi-ploughed forest track that goes up into a little mountainous area that I'm going to go up and do some exploring in. This morning temps were about minus 25 degrees C so it's pretty damn cold. Right now it's going up to about minus 10 and right now the Jeep's on about 
four psi so really low tire pressure and it's that time of year where it's approaching spring and you really want flotation because it doesn't look that deep but if you leave the tire pressures up and you start spinning those wheels that thing will be up to its belly in no time but let's get up into that mountain and see what happens see if we can actually make it first i say we i'm on my own talking to a camera in the forest let's see how this goes Having trouble right off the bat just on the first slight incline the traction is just uh, really terrible the vehicle's not digging down it's floating pretty well we're moving but I just can't really do this entire trip on this progress so next flat ground I'm gonna put the chains on and put some traction back in the vehicle hopefully and then probably get stuck I've stopped off in this clearing here and it looks like a pretty good spot to put the chains on it's nice and flat so I think with the chains I just need to not wheel spin so much but the traction will be infinitely better it's really going uphill that's the problem so I'll get chains on all four tires just to secure my journey probably just need them on the back but better to be safe than sorry I've done a classic dog shit job of putting these on. I really should have put them on, but the pressure's a bit higher and uh, it would have made my life a lot easier. And it would have made the tensioners a lot easier to put on as well. And then I could have dropped the pressures, driven the car a bit, then tightened them again. I've been using these chains all winter and uh, I decided to put them in the, the workshop and modify them stupidly and now I've just realized when, when I got the chain all sorted I was doing it on 15 psi and I'm out of breath because I've been trying to put this damn chain on I'm a total idiot so I need to go back to the drawing board now and lengthen them a little bit more because I shortened them a tiny bit and uh and mark the links red so i could just hook them up real fast and on full psi it's just it's killing me This is 
going much, much better. Not going to go too fast because obviously wheel spinning is it's not going to be ideal. But uh, yeah, we're going up a lot quicker than we were before. hasty climb coming up, see how we do. So the vehicle's working hard and it's not really exhaust gas temps that are a problem there around 300 degrees C at the moment which is amazing. It's the coolant temps, you know that constant working hard and keeping at high RPM all the time, just those temperatures creeping up and they seem to steady out at around about 100 degrees C but I don't like to keep it there all the time so I'm letting the vehicle cool off but uh, now I'm about 95 and it seems to be maintaining that temperature just because I'm on first uh, gear, four low, just chugging up like this, Thomas the Tank Engine style, just giving the car a bit of a break. Sorry, the Jeep. All right, f off. Made a mistake, right? Forgive me for it. Well, I've reached the end of the road as far as going back up that mountain is concerned. You can probably see the contours of the snow from this shot with the drone. That it's not ploughed anymore and um, it looks like there's a lot of snow drifts and it's probably well over a metre high. Um, so uh, I won't be going that way so if I do carry on I'll be going right and I'm hoping that takes me nearer the lake. Um, if not it's with the snowshoes again. We all know how much I love that. Can't wait to get on them bloody snowshoes and work the bollocks off. spot not much of a view but beggars can't be choosers I've come all this way and it was a hell of a way I think I'm gonna stay here
Well, this is a really beautiful location. It's pretty secluded actually, which I quite like. Sometimes I like being out in the open and exposed, other times uh, it's nice to be tucked away. And with the wind coming in tonight, it's a great spot because the wind's howling over the top of these trees, over the top of this little mountain here. We should have some good cover. But I lost my sunglasses uh, in all the commotion and the excitement of uh, getting up here in that drive. And I also crashed the drone. Although I don't really think I did crash the drone. I, I'm fairly certain I saw Bigfoot lob a turd at it. He flung something and I'm fairly certain he was wearing my sunglasses. So he's obviously f***ing with me again. Just got to finish blowing up a few things. I use this electric pump, mainly because I love the sound of it. When you're out in the wilderness and that's going, it's just like, wow, I'm here, I'm finally here. Obviously that's sarcasm. Um, the reason being is I can suck the air out of the mattresses I've got here and make them really thin. And that's how I'm able to pack the tent down so flat with my sleeping gear inside too. So as much as the, the sound is irritating, it's pretty damn functional really for for packing down and not getting moisture inside of all this stuff. No mosquitoes yet. Well, the snow's much easier to walk on than the last time I was out. We've had some really, really cold weather. So it's kind of like froze the top a bit. And it's a bit better for flotation, but I'm on a bit of a wood collection.
Well, that's fire prep all done. Got my logs, got my kindling, got my tinder, got a little bit of a raft. Ground's cold, obviously. Never really gonna get much luck with a fire on ice like that if you don't put something underneath it. So, um, ready to roll. I know what you're thinking. All that wood collection and you're using this thing here, but this is strictly a warmth and sausage fire. And those two things don't go together like that, but for cooking sausages later and for warmth and you know keeping the critters at bay. So uh, it's nice to have a fire at night, but I also like using this as well because it's just real fast. And I'm just gonna reheat some lunch. But anyway, those are my excuses. You figure out what yours are. This is when you know you uh, spent too much money on the Jeep leftovers. nice thing to do with these things is once you've served up the food just keep keep it running and uh, get some water in there for cleaning and you can just leave the heat on low put the lid back on and the steam will do the rest and then it can be wiped down you don't have to scrub it nothing like that yeah see how this goes didn't bring any cheese with me but Always better the next day. One thing that can be really off-putting for some people with white gas is, is the blackness that comes off of it, all the soot that builds up. It doesn't really bother me, um, although you see me cleaning it, <laughs> but I like to give it a little clean once in a while. Um, but mine just stands up as it is like this in the back of the drawer system. So it doesn't actually touch anything, but I mean, if you're putting it in a bag, you probably are going to see that bag collect a lot of black soot and probably need washing periodically or from time to time. So something worth bearing in mind is probably why a lot of people use gas burns a lot cleaner but it is more expensive and rubbish in cold weather. I think I'm going to put the fire on now, sit down with a warm drink after dinner. It'll be dark very shortly. Should be job done.
Good morning. As you can probably tell, I've woken up not too long ago, but I slept extremely well. As I always do when I'm out here, I was going to say I slept like a baby, but that saying shouldn't really be a thing. Um, but it was a beautiful night, really nice, and uh, not that cold, about minus 10 degrees C. So, you know, with the diesel heater off, as it always is when I'm sleeping, it's, um, you know, very cosy in the sleeping bag. Uh, which is rated to much much lower than that so I, was, I had a really good night and uh, it's very quiet up here that's that's probably the main thing for me is just just the wind cutting through the trees all you hear when you're, you're going to sleep and it's very relaxing it's kind of like listening to the sound of water it's lush but uh, yeah I think there was meant to be northern lights but I didn't see any when I went out of the tent when it was dark um, I mean, maybe maybe it happened much later in or earlier in the morning, and I won't know till I see the time lapse when I get home. But time for some breakfast, cup of tea. There's a nasty rumor going round that uh, I make shit pancakes. I don't know where that rumor came from. I've I've never made a shit pancake, but uh, I'll prove you wrong today. It's a shame we can't adjust that actually. Good pancake, good pancake, good first pancake here. It's just f***ing going great. Going really good this. So, uh, first pancake. There you go, Bigfoot. This is yours, mate. You go enjoy that. Enjoy that, mate. Keep the glasses. To be honest with you, it's just this. I'm not shit at cooking pancakes, but like if you look at, I think it's just this Maruka thing. Because all the heat's just in the middle all the time. Like it's probably it's probably be better on an open fire, to be honest. I, I don't remember having this much trouble on open fires, but I've never been able to cook good pancakes on this thing. I think I'm just going to have to do much smaller pancakes, basically, because the the heat is is all here. This this is the heat around here. It doesn't really cook that quick. Because when I'm cooking food, I move things around, so I keep things warm out here. Cook in the centre. Nothing wrong with that. So shut up. So that probably wasn't the uh, the best pancake cooking session, but you know what? It's very difficult on this. That's my excuse. It's, the heat is just too central. So maybe I should just look into a bigger burner, but it's no problem with everything else. It's just pancakes. So Well, that's it the jeep's all packed away ready for next time 
I like to pack it away like that, just so when I get back I don't have to worry about anything. Just get the bags with the food in and the clothes, take it out, put it in the house and then, you know, just, just leave it until until next time. So, you know, it's a nice thing to do really. I, I used to be a bit lazy sometimes and be like, oh, I'll do all the washing up when I get back. But uh, these days I've sort of been a bit stricter with myself because um, the last thing you want to do when you get back from a camp trip is be unloading everything and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a real pain in the ass. Like once you get a good system together, it's, you can kind of streamline it. But then I am solo. So when the family's on board, it is a very different story. There's a lot more kit. Yeah, in six weeks or five weeks or something like that, all this snow will be gone. And this will be an absolute bog, basically, of mud. And you won't be able to get up here without destroying the track. So I think I'll retire the Jeep off-road for a couple of weeks after my next trip or my next couple of days out in the winter. Um, rebuild the bumper tyre carrier and uh, get that ready for the summer. Try and drop around sort of 45 kilos off of that. But uh, anyway... Enough of my life story. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the fact that, you know, you've got a bit of drone footage now. Hopefully I haven't overdone it. Like some people do complain about that from time to time, I've noticed on YouTube. But uh, for me, it's been a real joy to film this. Much easier than my previous trips where I'm running ahead of the camera, setting the drone up. Sorry, the camera up, running back. I remember I did a an autumn video last autumn and I was going through like a, a bog basically an old road through a bog and I got absolutely soaked setting the camera up and the same goes with the snow as well you know when you're running forward 100 meters running back it's, it's a pain in the butt really so having that drone that's able to just kind of track the vehicle and, and hover like a meter off the ground almost acting like a static camera as well as those nice aerial shots too but you have to be careful with those in Sweden because the regulations are pretty tight here with horizons and stuff but you know you just have to submit the footage and they have to approve it if you capture the horizon and all that kind of thing but anyway i hope it's enhanced the videos it's certainly made my life a lot easier much easier for me to film but uh, anyway enough talking thanks for watching i'll see you next time